Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning from Waterville United Methodist Church. I give thanks for each and every one on this beautiful day. It's a great day because it's a day that God has made and the sun's shining and, and we give thanks that, that God is always with us. Our uh, core value that we're looking at today is connect. By connecting with God and others, we cultivate personal, family, and community relationships. I have a, a few announcements. One is that uh, Susan Perry is un unable to be here this morning with Susie's Coats. Susie's Coats is one of those winter ministries in which coats are provided for people. And there's been a, some changes over the last two or three years since we first got started. Uh, Susie's really asking for new coats. And that's, that's never been a problem from us. But some of the donors have uh, given coats that were worn out. And it, it's just too much to have them need to sort through everything. So they really want warm, new coats and larger sizes, not just for kids, because they're, the, the ministry is expanding from kids to adults as well that are on the street or in need of, of being warm. So uh, this is one of our ministries, and, and I ask that you pray uh, and uh, bless those that are cold with new coats. Also, we've been praying about a ministry for the last several years uh, as a partnership with Waterville Primary. And the demographics of our area is shifting a little bit. And there are kids that have great needs. And, and God finally provide a leader, provided a leadership team. And we met this week with the, the principal, the counselor, and the IT person at Waterville Primary and asked them what their greatest needs are right now uh, for the kids. Uh, we can't do anything in person at this point, but here's some of the things, and watch for the announcement. Uh, they'll be coming in the, tomorrow or the next day of all these things I'm going to share, but I'm just so excited about this opportunity that I, that I want to share it this morning. One of the things some of the families deal with are problems hearing during their internet uh, class because there's more than one kid in the same space at the same time, and they're talking loud. So uh, they, they need some earbuds with microphones so kids can wear the, the earbuds and then talk quieter through the microphone. And, and they, need, they need 30 of those. And when you get the, the spreadsheet, you'll see that they're between nine and, and they're between 10 and 11 dollars in cost. Uh, also, they need a document camera. Actually, they need three of them so that they can do the, the online learning in a more efficient and, and higher quality way. And they're doing a great job already. Uh, a, a document camera holder for a cell phone so they continue to use that equipment as well. One of the big needs are replacement Chromebooks. And we have the, the model number and everything. They need 13 of those. They're about $244 each. And then they've registered at Target. The nurse is responsible for providing proper clothing for kids that come in with, with something that's inappropriate or maybe something that's soiled. And uh, they tend to go through these, so they've registered at Target for all that they need, including shoes and, and other things. So if, if you want to go online before you get the link uh, via email, uh, all you have to do is go to Target in Holland and um, type in either uh, Jamie Hollinger's name or uh, the nurse's name, which is uh, Valerie uh, Bradfield, and their registry will come up and you can order it right then. You can do it online. It's a great way to bless the kids when they get back. So uh, like I said, I'm really excited about this ministry and, and all that will unfold with it It'll be a, a type of partnership in which the whole church will be involved, and we give thanks. As we, uh, as we move into our ministry this morning, if uh, we're going to do Holy Communion, so you'll have to use the elements that you have available where you are. And we'll give thanks for that when it comes to that time, so for a time of preparation. So let us now be blessed as Olga plays our opening music.
join with me in our opening prayer. O oh God, you call to us from the wild places. You call to us from the inner chambers of our hearts. We come and answer to our call. We come to pray, to praise, to learn of your love for all creation. Reveal your glory that we may see it together. Inform and inspire us to seek your kingdom on earth in our time. Amen. Now Clay is going to light the Advent candle for us. The second candle on the Advent wreath represents preparation for peace. Just as we get our homes and churches ready for Christmas, we also get our hearts ready for baby Jesus. Mark 1 verse 3 through 4 says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, look straight past for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, spread the word that Jesus was on his way. Part of preparations for Christmas can include letting other people know what Christmas is all about, the birth of Savior. Thank you. Great job. As we turn to our time of prayer, we uh, there's all those things that are printed on our worship sheet, but I have one that, that we've been asked to lift up. Uh, Browning uh, now has COVID in the main unit. There's at least one uh, resident and three or four staff members. So I received a, uh, an email from one of the people that live at Browning asking us to pray specifically for protection for everybody that's there. So as we give thanks that God is with us, let us turn to the Lord in prayer, giving everything that's on our hearts to Him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us. Fill us with your presence in the power of your Holy Spirit. Cover us as we worship you today, each in our own, own homes or in our automobiles. Lord, we're tired of all that's going on, but we ask that you continue to carry us through this time to lift us up to encourage us. And Lord, use each of us to be encouragers of others. Lord, this is a, this is a time that uh, we're going through, but it, it won't be forever. For we know that you are in control and we can depend upon you. 
So Lord, touch us. Touch our community. Continue to, to guide us as we work in serving the kids and the school and the teachers and all the staff at Waterville Primary. Provide your wisdom and guidance and provision. Use us to make a difference in someone else's life. Through the power of Jesus and praying in the power of his name. Amen. Our scripture uh, this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. This is a story of John the Baptist's ministry. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The mess this messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they have repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locust and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks for the reading and the truth of God's Word. God always prepares the way. No matter what we, we face, God will prepare us for that moment. Yet, we're required, if we're going to be prepared for that moment, to listen to the call to go out and share the good news. John the Baptist was called to prepare the way for his cousin Jesus. Now, he was, he was unique in that he ate a diet that wasn't normal. He dressed in a rugged way. He was out in the wilderness. People had to go to him. But then think of what this scripture says. It said, all of Judea went to hear him. In other words, he was different enough that everybody wanted to see him. Now, it's kind of like a, one of those events that's going on, and we just want to be there to see what's going on, and that's what happened here. And, and it's really important that in this particular scripture that uh, God reveals to us that not only all of Judea, but all of Jerusalem went out to hear what John the Baptist had to say. And one of the things he was saying is that you need to confess your sin, repent, and turn back to God, and receive forgiveness. And he, the sign of them being forgiven was baptism with water. Today, we use baptize, baptism with water also as a way of becoming a part of the kingdom of God. It's a symbol of God's grace. Nothing that we have done deserves it. It's all that God has done, and He provides the way. And it was, it was a great number of people that went out and were baptized. Now, this is really strange in that this was still in the time of sacrifices, and the normal way for your sin to be forgiven was to make a, a sacrifice of some kind. It could be grain, it could be a bird, it could be uh, animals. It depends on the sin. And we don't see any place where people are saying, John the Baptist is doing this wrong. He's forgiving people that uh, haven't gone through the, the process that we've lived with for all these years. So it was something completely new and different to be baptized with water in this way. But then he makes this proclamation. He said, I'm here. You're listening to me. 
You're answering the call. You're repenting and confessing of your sin. You're being baptized so that we recognize the forgiveness of your sin. But let me tell you, I'm only the messenger for one who is coming that is greater than I am. I baptize you with water for the forgiveness of sin. But the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He said that Jesus, the one coming after me, is so much beyond me that I can't even untie his sandals from his feet like a slave would do. See, when, when people went into a home, uh, they wore sandals, their feet were dirty, there would be, they would wash their feet before they went any further into the, into the residence. And if there was a servant in the house of any kind, that was the servant's job, the slave's job, to bend down, untie the sandal, and wash the person's feet. And John's saying, I'm not worthy to even untie his sandal so that his feet could be washed. I'm not worthy to bow down before him. But the good news is this. Jesus is coming. And it's not about when we are worthy. It's all about what Jesus does for us, what God is doing in us, and what God is doing for us right now here in Waterville. We have a, uh, it, it's an unbelievable time from this perspective. You know, it's taken over 20 years to get to a place of seeing a new building. Now, you would think that it would be unwise to do that right now with COVID and everything, but this is a, a way of encouraging not only each of us, but our whole community, that we're willing to go ahead by faith, that God has prepared the way, and we're going to be faithful to that way, and we're going to live this out, and we're not going to let anything stand in our way. That's what God would have us do. If we're going to follow His way, then nothing can sidetrack us. The same is true as far as making a connection with those in need through Waterville Primary. Uh, a few weeks ago, our Sunday school, when we were able to meet, uh, made care packages for every one of the staff at the primary school. 55 packages. In the internet call that we had this week, the, the principal said every person was so excited about it, we were giddy like third graders. Now think of that, a simple package saying that, you know, we're praying for you and you're, you're with us and we want you to have this and we're remembering you. That, that created such an encouragement and excitement within the staff. And that's what God wants us to do is to provide that kind of encouragement. There's nothing preventing us from reaching out and touching others with the love of God. And ultimately, one of the needs is going to be, especially in the summer, uh, kids needing and families needing food. So start praying now how God may want to use you in providing food for these families, being part of the solution, part of sharing that through Christ we love them them. We love everyone, just as God loves us. So God is so God is preparing the way for us today. Whatever our ministry might be, as an individual or as a group, God is preparing the way. The way is prepared. All we need to do is to see where God is in that preparation and join God there. That's what was happening as John the Baptist was ministering out in the wilderness. The Holy Spirit moved in such a way that people felt called to hear His message. People feel called to hear the message of God even today. The message of love, the message of grace, the message of forgiveness, the message of new life. A message that 
God is always with us and will never leave us or forsake us. And we give thanks. So know this. God has prepared the way for you. He's prepared the journey for you. Are we willing to follow the way that's been prepared and to live out the journey God has called us to? See, God prepares, even prepares our hearts and our minds. Sometimes we think we aren't worthy of what God asks of us. But God says, through Christ, I've made you worthy. Don't worry about that. Just do what I ask you to do. And so that's my word, my, my hope, my encouragement today, that we all will have the courage and the faith to answer God's call and live into it the miraculous results that God will bring when we are faithful. And we give thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like I said earlier, we're going to, we're going to receive Holy Communion. And so if, if you have elements there at your, your home, we're going to bless those now. And then we're going to say the prayer of confession. Then we'll receive Holy Communion. So I have the bread and the cup, the body and the blood of Christ. We set these elements apart for your glory, O oh God, as this holy reminder tells us that you have forgiven us, that you provided the way. Lord, let this be a time where we're excited that we have confessed and repented in our living life your way. And we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, creator of all that is, donor of grace and giver of life, hear our prayer. There are chasms in our lives, deep valleys that separate us from one another and from you. We confess that we have allowed those rifts to grow for fear of admitting our part in the separation, for fear of being rejected when we reach out. You call us to be a reconciled life, to healed relationships, to a wholeness with each other and with you. Mend us, we pray, and make us new creations through the power and the love of Christ. In whose name we pray, amen. So Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of him. And he took the cup and he poured it and said, this is a cup of the new covenant for the forgiveness of sin. It's my blood that's been shed for you. Take and drink as often as you gather together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many reminders that you provide for us, and especially this reminder of your grace. This reminder of Jesus' faithfulness all the way to the cross. A reminder that as a result of his willingness to die on that cross, that by his blood our sins are covered. We are made clean in our confession and our repentance. Lord, be with us 
as we live our lives in the joy of knowing you. Amen.